Dear Swiss Borgo Crypto community, thank you so much for tuning in. And today we have another episode of Swiss Borg Alpha, a product that is democratizing early stage investment and making you angel investors. And a very interesting theme, a very interesting project, and a very interesting co-founder is called Privacy AI, and his name is David Zhao. And today we have two special guests. We have Miles Deutscher, who is one of the most prominent crypto figures on X and YouTube. And we have also Fur, who's running Nebula, a very powerful marketing agency in Web3. So without further ado, let's do the introductions. Hey guys, yeah, if, you, if you've if you seen me around on Twitter, if you recognize my name, um, that's me. I'm a crypto analyst. I also have a YouTube channel. I've been investing in the space for five years. Um, yeah, pretty active in the markets, trading, investing, all that sort of stuff. So it's great to be here and excited to chat privacy and AI. And guys, just for you to know, definitely give Miles D a follow. Uh, he has some really, really good content. I think, Miles, you're the guy that I bookmarked the most across X. Wow. So that's usually a compliment. Very that's an high quality content. Yeah. And also, Fur from Nebula Marketing Agency. Do you want to introduce yourself, brother? Hey, th thanks, David. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot for the invite. It's uh, amazing to be here also with David from Privacy, one of the projects that we are supporting very closely for a long time at Nebula. And Miles, it's always a pleasure uh, being together. Yes, I am uh, the co-founder and CEO at Nebula. We are a marketing agency and accelerator. We support different projects uh, in the Web3 space. And uh, privacy is one of the projects that we're following closely and we are supporting closely for a, for a long time. Uh, and we are very bullish on their AI and deep in um, use cases. Yeah. Awesome, guys. So without further ado, I'm going to share a quick screen here, guys. And just to remind everyone on today's format. So we're going to use, and not necessarily in the exact chronological order, a framework called the seven T's. And you can see here, the first T stands for team. The second T stands for tech. The third T stands for token. The fourth, the theme and the trend, which you guys may know it's AI, but there's also a secondary and a tertiary technology behind this. Uh, the traction, the timing in terms and conditions. So without further ado, if you guys don't mind, I'd love to kick off with the very first question. And David, you know, when I first met you, I heard some really good things about you as a person, but also as a technologist, uh, saying that essentially Binance Labs had invested in you in the past through incubation, and Binance Labs are also investing in you again on this project, which is a very, very good sign. So can you tell us why you think you've managed to get such good investors on board, a little bit about your background and story? Yeah, thank you, Alex. I mean, thank you for bringing this question. I mean... Uh, for uh, Binance Labs, is actually our first investor in the whole VC portfolio. When I when I was in the incubation for my previous project, I talked to them. I met them in in, in person in Paris for almost three weeks, and I met the whole Binance teams. Their amazing incubation program, and I when I when I started with privacy, I told them about my vision of bringing uh, confidential computing into decentralized uh, infrastructure and uh, privacy is based on the fully home of encryption at that time and no one knows about this term fhe and I, I tell them this is probably will be one of the most promising cryptographic technologies in the whole crypto uh, industry and they believed in, believe in us and believe in the team i bring in together so, yeah, it was, um, it was an amazing journey with them. At the very beginning, they supported us from uh, instituting the the uh, the company structure and uh, IP structure. Uh, we started uh, actually we started with writing patents with uh, the team together, and later on, when we start moving our technology from uh, pure FH research to deep in infrastructure building. Uh, it takes actually about one year to finish that, and by I think by the end of the, like 2023, uh, Masari had a report which is the discovering the whole uh, area uh, in this industry of FHE, which is mentioned as privacy as one of these uh, um, uh, landscape pictures. 
probably have some people, some VCs or industry partner have seen that. And yeah, we, then we start to getting known by more and more people and investors in this area. That was the whole story of building privacy. Amazing. I'll leave the floor for our amazing guests and I'll be quiet a little bit. So I'll pass it on to you, uh, Miles Fur, if you want to do the next question. Yeah, Alex, let me take the first question. So David, I would love to understand what is the actual problem that privacy is solving, right? Because I understand that privacy is not only an AI play, but it's also deep in, but it's also FHE and privacy. So I would love to understand the combination of these three amazing elements in Web3. What are the problems that you're able to solve with this? Sure. Um, let me probably explain a little bit more on the FHE side first, because that is the, the key part of this answer. So FHE, so-called uh, for the home of encryption, is actually allows encrypted data can be compute when it's encrypted. You don't need to decrypt it. For example, if you have like very simple equation one plus two equals to three, this equation, and you just encrypt one and a two into A and a B, and you just plus them together. And finally, you got answer, which is equal to C. And without the private key, you don't know the final answer to this simple equation, right? But since you are the owner of the, the, the private key of the data, you can decrypt it by your private key to see the final, the final answer, which is three, will be equal to C. So that is some kind of like a formula we can form, form out every calculation by using FHE, not just plus. It can be applied to multiply, can be applied to logical operations. And combining those three, you can use it for more complex computation, including machine learning, including neural network, including all AI formulas. So this is why FHE can be shining on the next decade for all kinds of technologies, because it can be, can be used for calculation on all encrypted data. And that protects the privacy of the, the AI data usage and also finish all the tasks of the AI. That's FHG can be used. Can I ask a really weird question for Miles? Miles, have you ever had a bot or a fake Miles out there? So many, every day. <laughs> really? Every week. So you probably see the problem even better than maybe what Fur and I can see, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's been instances of my followers getting like scammed. They've you know taken funds from them to like get some trading course or something. So you certainly see it like definitely in the content space and also for projects. Like there are so many like project fake projects, fake project bots, all sorts of things. Yeah. I mean, crypto is like a relatively easy industry to like conduct scams i suppose versus like other industries so it definitely opens and, the door and i think lately we've seen also this huge amount of bots that have been uh or are being leveraged for airdrop farming campaigns and david my understanding is through privacy and one of the first use case that it's the application of biometrics to prove human identity you guys could support projects to run actually airdrop campaigns, ensuring that the users behind the airdrop are humans, correct? Yes. I think based on the privacy infrastructure, which is a deep in, uh, infrastructure network we are building right now, uh, standing on that, we're building the first use cases, which is proof of human. Uh, we're building our app by our own, which is probably you can download it in right now in a Google Play Store or Apple Store. It's a very simple application, but once you download it, you register it and you rec you you mint uh, NFT automatically by your face feature vector, and that is like unique uh, feature of yourself from your biometric data. And what we do here compared to other proof of human applications is your personal biometric data will never be shown to anyone because it's been encrypted by your FHG key. So the application itself is more or less, you know, a simpli simplified version of MPC wallet. And you host three shadings, those three shadings 
uh, one is in your phone, another one is in your Google uh, Google Backup Drive, and another one is actually in our server. Two slash three settings can only decrypt your biometric data. So it's very safe. It's more or less you control your private key, you hold your assets. It's the same concept as uh, you take ownership of your own uh, assets, which is in, in this case, your biometric data is one of the assets, very important assets of your person. So we use that for uh, eliminate the boots in all the AI environment, for example, in the social uh, networks, for example, in Tinder. When you talk to someone for <laughs> about 10 minutes, then you find out it's a boot. I mean, we can eliminate that situation for for charting, for uh, anti-CB airdrops, and we can use that for any kind of like uh, um, environment, which is we don't want boots to to contaminate the environment, including like gaming or other environments, which is which is make your make the user experience much more uh, easier and safe. Ah, that's amazing. So, I guess if I would have to summarize it, David, what you're saying is you at privacy can encrypt private data without actually privacy having access to my biometrics. So that's no, we amazing. Cannot see that. can... We cannot back engineer to it. It's impossible. So compared to some other applications, I don't want to mention the name right now. Um, they collect your biometric data by giving you some of tokens, which is not the know. way we are doing it. So David, t could Tinder be a client of yours in the future where you actually are the back end for a Tinder, for example, type of app or a dating app? Yeah, can be. It can be a, a tool to eliminate bots in uh, social networks, including Tinder, Discord, Telegram. Actually, we have version for Telegram soon. Nice. Uh, yeah, I think that's amazing. Uh, no let me ask you a <laughs> question, David. I was going to say, why did you pick blockchain as the home for this technology instead of, you know, just running it like a traditional Web2 company and, you know, selling your your product to that's clients? That's really, like really, really good question. Yeah. So one question for this, oh, sorry, one answer for this is the decentralization makes your personal data more secure. That's that's what we are why we are building this network since your uh, private key controls your uh, personal data the fhc computation which is used for compare your current faces to your registered faces when you when you minted your nft in our server that is uh, a computation done in the edge in one of the 5000 nodes which is we're going to spread in this network. So um, even one of the nodes get been, uh, even one of the nodes uh, crashed or one of the nodes being hacked, you don't need to worry about it because the database is decentralized. No, nobody actually holds all the keys of the, the whole data system. That makes a lot of sense sentiment verifiability yeah. i just have a quick question on, on uh, based on what miles said earlier so it sounded david like miles was concerned about financial crime right like basic financial crime with bots do you see the bots getting worse and worse over time because right now it's probably a fake account but how do you see these bots evolving like we already see like some ai apps where you can create a fake miles or a fake fur yeah. you know literally like sometimes scarily you know real um, yeah, but, it's you fake know, issues. It's been uh, it's been years. I mean, they can fake your voice, can fake your faces. They can use that for like uh, passing through some verification, right? But in this case, uh, proof of human is very is very unique because they can get your data first to do that kind of verification. But it, but if you ver, uh, use FHG private key, where, where FHG is very powerful cryptographic technologies, post-quantum technologies, even quantum computer couldn't hack it. So once you encrypt your data, your data will be permanently in the public network and 
no one could hack it. So that's the most important part. So in a public network, if you want your personal data being secured, you're better to hold your private key by yourself, not, not give it to some custody server or some big companies because they might misuse it anyway. So they probably sell your data with purpose or with no purpose. I mean, we don't know that. Fascinating, okay. fascinating. So I just wanted to really quickly go uh, back into the 70s. So, so far, guys, we talked about the team. We talked about the tech. What is the problem, you know, solving? And thanks so much, Miles, for the great question on why Web3 as well and why not just a Web2 app. That was a really, really good question. Is there anything else that you gents wanted to ask relative to the team or the technology? Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask on the tech front, like from a user perspective, how does this look? I know you went a little bit into it, but like in the daily life of, of a retail user interacting with your technology. Yeah. So let's say um, uh, for use cases wise, uh, for example, the the Telegram, the mini app we're going to launch soon, which is interactive with our app or the TG boot, actually. The TG boot in, in a one Telegram session, when you chat with someone, you, you if you want to verify the the counterpart who is chatting with you, you could actually use the TG put to send him uh, a verification uh, link. Then once they finish, once they finish it, this verification will will be called back by the Telegram mini program, and sending back this uh, verification to the session you have. It can be used for one-to-one -one session, chat session, can be used for one-to-n chat session, which is like group. So this you can you can create a group with real human. Uh, we can use it for uh, airdrop when you want to reward your group users. So that is uh, a lot of use cases we can discover by using this tool for both Web2 and Web3. And do you view this more as a retail like customer focused product or do you view it more as like an enterprise product that yeah, you can I mean, like, for the application company? itself which is more yeah. b2c focused which is retail yeah. focused but for the infrastructure because everything on this app is building on our network so we're also providing this network to the later uh, b2b customers who want to use similar technologies to protect their uh, users in their own applications. We can support it. We can help them to customize the AI models, help them to host it in our networks, paying using our utility tokens. All these things have been done by our smart contract kit, which is called Primenetics in our private privacy AI network. So we have like two models. Okay, so you have B2C business and B2B business. Exactly. What I really like about, about these miles, and you and I have spoken about it in the past, is that uh, a project where we invest long-term needs to fit multiple criteria. Definitely having B2C and B2B business is great, but I think also having the possibility to not only scale in Web3, but also to scale in Web2, it's something amazing. And I believe that privacy with those uh, use cases, like for example, the one they had with, with Tinder, proving humanity for social applications, not only in Web3, but in Web2, is something that at least to me, it's, it's very bullish from a scalability perspective of the, of the project. Okay, so these are really, really good questions. It seems like we've already covered most of the team and tech-related questions. So without further ado, I think, Miles, you wanted to ask some questions relative to the token. Is that correct? Yeah, I would love to have a, um, a stronger understanding, and maybe especially for the listeners, of the dynamics of the token. So, David, could you explain the, the logic behind issuing a token and how it factors into the overall privacy ecosystem? So, I mean, speaking about uh, tokens, I have to explain how it works in our network. So basically, it's a utility token. You can use it for, um, basically, we use it for car source computation power. And this is not like traditional computation power. I mean, compared to ACER or some other uh, computation networks. It's a more privacy computation power. So you use it for paying the gas for the nodes who are going to run the FHE machine learning pipelines for you. And also this, uh, the miners 
can get part of this uh, revenue uh, from the network when it performs good on the FHE machine learning. So for example, uh, uh, if I have an application called breast cancer application running on, on one of the nodes, and when the machine learning takes uh, the infer from one of the, the guys who going to upload their own data to do the inference, and they have to pay the gas fee to the network to make sure the whole inference procedures has been securely done by the network. So which is reasonable as one of the business model. So the utility, the utility tokens pay to the network and part of the fee will pay to the miner because they provide hardware, providing computation power. And a small fraction will pay to us because we provide the whole uh, pipelines of the FHE and also help the application to optimize uh, the pipelines and host it on it. And another part will probably just be burned to keep the inflation deflation rate. So it's like typical uh, proof of work and plus, I mean, proof of work network. But in reality, it's a mix with proof of state and proof of work because we would like to have uh, the, the node runners to stably provide services here. So it's kind of like you stake some amount of token to be uh, to be part of the network. And this is one of the reason we have the first season of the node shares, and we're gonna ship uh, 5,000 nodes to retailers uh, or uh, any institution miners, because once the node holders bought the nodes, it means it already staked some part of the tokens, our tokens, and they get, get rewarded from the staking part. And once they provide computation power, they get another part of reward from the network, which is, why the, the 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 node holders can have the revenue share of the network. And the, the, the node holders use our USB, which is gonna ship to each node holders uh, to prove, uh, to, to provide proof of readiness because the USB is, is like hardware license will 24 seven check your nodes is up and running because once some application needs services, you need to be ready, be there. So this is the utility tokens. We are providing uh, the services for the retailers and application runners. Well, that, that's great. Thanks a lot for your answer, David. Um, and it's great to, to understand a little bit more how the nodes will work and the whole ecosystem and the tokens. I have a question because one of the key challenges that we've seen in the last month is some projects launching at incredibly high FDVs and not only launching at high FDVs, but also investment rounds happening with huge FDVs. So my question is for those users that wanna participate into privacy by owning a node, what is the FDV or the implied FDV at which a user that buys a node will become an investor in privacy? So it's a really good question about uh, the node sales FDV. I mean, it's the FTV right now really depends on eventually how many nodes we have been sold. And for current season one, I would say we only sell 5,000 nodes. So actual FTV is actually around five, $50 million. Uh, so it's actually a very valuable and precious nodes, which is compared to other node sales in different projects. The reason we do that is we, we would like to have the the first season uh, node holders have the most valuable resources in our network and uh, would like to stay, they uh, would like to them to stay longer with us with actually three years of a period at least. And they can get the most benefits from both the node, uh, rewardings and the airdrops for us. Understood. So you mentioned there's going to be season one. Do you know approximately how many seasons you guys are planning to do? And yeah. what would be maybe that maximum capacity of nodes? 
So maximum capacity of the nodes, I mean, c- according to the current uh, uh, market, I mean, we probably won't sell more than 20,000 nodes. But even mm-hmm. with the maximum number of the 20,000 nodes being sold in the whole season, different seasons, it, the FTV is actually lower than 130 wow. million for the first okay. season. So users that will buy in the first season, even at a maximum capacity yeah. of all nodes sold, they would still be around 100, 120, 130 million. Okay. Exactly, exactly. And I have Alex, to mention that there's oh, one percentage of whole token distribution will be only dedicated to airdrop to the first season 5,000 nodes, which is very general from us. So that's going to be additional to the rewards that you obtain by running a node. You will be getting your rewards, but additionally, the first season holders will get a 1% airdrop from the total token supply. Exactly. Got it. Alex, I heard you had a question, right? All right. Thanks so much for... So David, you know, whenever I try to pitch privacy AI to some of the people I respect and trust the most in the crypto space, the first common question that I get back from them is, this sounds a little bit like WorldCoin. How does it differ? And so I'd love to ask you, because obviously WorldCoin has had a lot of success. We can see here on CoinMarketCap that it has a fully diluted valuation of $16 billion, which is crazy. Uh, and yeah, we'd just love to hear from you how you're positioning yourself, how you want to be different relative to WorldCoin. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Uh, for this question, I would say, Firstly, we don't have Sam Atman in our team, which is makes the FTV crazily high in this market. But uh, we do have some other benefits compared to WorldCoin, especially from technology-wise and the marketing-wise. Let me just share one deck, which is can probably show some differences here. So from the solution wise, I would say WorldCoin is a very different ID based solution, which is they provide sort of digital ID based on their own solutions. Because in that case, they need to collect biometric data from every single person in this world, right? They have to collect iris data from Africa, from European, from different areas i mean uh which is make it it actually makes the operation harder because then you need to have operators locally using op to scan the iris and it's probably not compliant in different regions and i mean for us some people are calling us actually uh WorldCon in solana which is because we got 250K users minted in Solana in the first two weeks, which is crazy. There was almost everyone trying to mint by using downloading our app and mint the faces by uh, when we launch our app. And so compared to WorldCom, we are actually not giving out uh, ID. We are only doing the comparison by using uh the face features and it's kind of proof proof of humanity tools so it's very different use cases and is compared to what kinds very lightweight we don't collect user data we don't have a database so we don't need to we don't need to prove the uniqueness of the human we just need to prove you are a human not a bot and try to eliminate all the bots around you that's what we are aiming for. Yeah. So, and also, uh, have, you have probably have seen that even in the current Series A in our current round, we only have 200, 250 million valuation compared to WorldCon 1, 1, 16 billion. Or, I mean, we, we check a few days ago, it was like 20, 20, 22 billion. So, FTV wise, I think we have a large potential to grow uh, in the long term when we start growing our user basis in the next couple of months, I think we're getting more um, attraction uh, from the retail side and from the VC side. Nice. Amazing. Thank you very much, David. Yeah. So looking at the current 
landscape of AI tokens. Like if you go into CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko, you, you can see a variety of different tokens. So you've got Nia, Brenda, BitTensor, all these plays, a lot of them sitting around the $1 billion to $3 billion market cap range. How do you see privacy fitting in amongst all these different tokens? Uh, how would you say, what would you say your biggest differentiator is compared to a Nia, a Renda, a Tao? What are you doing differently? And how do you see your standing? So I think none of this uh, uh, AI chain actually competitors of privacy. And privacy is uh, infrastructure. So we can deploy to any the chain, any of the those AI chains, including layer ones, including other infrastructures. So we bring this uh, deep in infrastructure with Privernetics uh, smart contract key to those ecosystem to make sure the AI application can use confidential computing easily and adopt FH machine learning pipelines easily to their developers, to easily to their application runners. So that's it. So it's not competitor, but more like ecosystem co-builders. Does that mean maybe in the future there's like lots of room for you to potentially partner with other chains, other... Yeah, actually we are partnering with AI projects. Them right now. And... Um, we probably can deploy to them one by one. And for us, it's uh, very easy by deploying to like no, those EVM chain, non-EVM chain, by just switching different languages. We, we actually support Rust and Solidity for different language ecosystems. I think I accidentally cut you off. Who, who's the partner, the name of the partner? Uh, for example, we have uh, a Tor network. We have partner right now. And uh, we actually support EVM chain very easily. Uh, so we're going to support it with uh, Abitron, with uh, the testnet. And uh, right now, actually, our testnet we want is based on BSC. So everyone can test, for example, breast cancer, scam email filters with all these kind of applica AI applications running in our nodes based on those chain. So we will have the testnet v2 gonna be launched soon, and testnet v3 we're gonna allow the user to do pre-mining based on uh, the network we are building. And but for application running on FHE machine learning, you can basically put in a Docker from our server and easily run it by yourself. And all the data sets is open data sets. It can be easily encrypted by our FHE key by just using command line right now. That's awesome and. With all that progress, there's one team maybe that we didn't really address, guys, which is quite important, which is traction. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that your socials have very strong traction, but also last time I checked, David, you already had 250,000 downloads plus NFTs minted within the app. Is that correct? Within the IM yeah, exactly. IM that is only for Solana. And sooner we're going to support IPTROM and some other chain. So we'll be multi-chain supported for the other application. So more uh, the different users from different ecosystem can easily uh, try our application. And um, we also support in-app chase. So even Web2 users can easily pay to mint this uh, NFT in our application and to prove their later on either webcast or Discord in different Web2 uh, scenarios. Awesome. Any last questions for Miles before we adjourn? Um, yeah, I'll ask a question. So okay. what do you think the best way for the community if after listening to this, you know, they're bullish on, on what they've heard and they're interested, what do you think the best way for them to get exposure to the project is and also get involved? Yeah, I think we're going to open for the testnet V3 for all the committee members to join uh, for both pre-mining and running the nodes and uh, one thing I haven't mentioned, I mean, before we launch our node sales, we have more than 5,000 applications uh, sending to our website said they want to be in the mining program. So then we will notify all of them, like, hey, it's almost ready, so you can join in as the miners in our, uh, in our network to support FHE machine learning pipelines in a decentralized manner. And yeah, and the, for the the season one application, we're gonna do airdrops to the all users in the first season campaign. 
And we will do similar to season two, which is we'll support different ecosystem. Beautifully put. Listen, guys, you know, when I look at Web3, I must say that there is a very strong book, which is called Blue Ocean Strategy, which helps build unique selling points or core value propositions. And I think one thing that you've done really well, David, is you've created your own Blue Ocean Strategy by having AI as your core technology for efficiency, for data. Uh, you've also added FHE for privacy and making sure that in the future it's quantum proof. And then on top of that, you're decentralizing the network through the node sale uh, and having a deep in factor. So I like what I'm hearing. I don't know if you guys have any last comments, but it's been very, very interesting to talk to you and have all you guys ask very, very interesting questions. Yeah, thank you, Alex. I think for me, a couple of key takeaways as well is the potential of scalability, right? We see how it is a B2C model in, in Web3, also B2B, but also there is infinite uh, potential of, of scalability also on the Web2 side. So, yeah, uh, thanks a lot. And so much opportunity, so many, so many different applications is contained to different chains. So like, you know, the, the world is an oyster. The world is your oyster. <laughs> for a product like this. <laughs> Thank you very much, David and Alex so uh, nice. for hosting us. Thanks so much, Chance. And please feel free to leave some comments here below if there's some questions that we have not asked. And we hope that you guys can all support David with Privacy AI. Thank you so much, David, for coming today. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Fernando. Cheers. Bye, guys. Thanks, David. Thank you, Mike.